Today to an intimate crowd in New York on Friday, a jury in a Manhattan courtroom. They will decide whether he copied Marvin Gaye's classic Let's Get It On in his hit Thinking Out Loud. We're going to play both of them for you now so you can hear the similarities. Baby, man, trying to hold back and feel it for so long. Heart could still fall less, heart at 23. And I'm thinking about how it is on. Let's get it on. It's really similar. Joe Bennett is a professor at Berkeley College of Music. He served as an expert witness in cases like this. All right. Um, first, let's just ask the big question. Is this copyright infringement? Absolutely not. Hmm. This is a very simple, commonplace chord sequence that appears in lots of songs. And the, that's the reason we hear the similarity. If you listen really carefully past those four chords that keep ascending in a two bar loop, you'll notice that there are no lyrics the same, no melody the same in the verse or the chorus. So what we have is two completely different songs with slightly similar backing tracks. You know, it's interesting. I, I read that you said that um, often we're asking the wrong question here. The question should not be how similar is song B to song A. Instead, it should be how original is song A? Explain that. Yes, so obviously, Let's Get It On is a stone-cold classic and a fantastic, unique melody and a great lyric, as indeed is Thinking Out Loud separately. But the particular backing that it uses, that four-chord, two-bar loop, appears in lots of songs. And because it appears in lots of songs, it's what courts and musicologists call a commonplace element that is therefore not protected by copyright. So I'll just demonstrate on guitar, if I may. Yeah, sure. So you play, you play both of the songs there in that segment uh, mashed up into the key of D. They're actually in different keys, but so, so that we can hear the similarities, that's quite a, a common thing to do. So thinking out loud as we heard has this loop. Let's get it on has this loop. So similar, but not identical. But if we just take D, F sharp minor, G and A, that for example is the same chords as Van Morrison's Have I Told You Lately from 1989. It is Georgie Girl by The Seekers from 1967, which is a little faster, but the same chords kind of. Lionel Richie's Stuck On You. Shania Twain's Still The One. I mean, there are so many songs that use this very well-loved chord sequence. Okay. So you could do the same mashup technique with those and you'd get the same result. So I am fascinated. I don't know how much time the producer has allocated for this segment, but I got more questions now. So if you say you've played th these chords with so many songs that we all know, then when is there actual copyright infringement if we're talking chords and melodic phrasing? Because we've got, what, thousands, maybe millions of songs over the decades of song copyrights. Are there fewer legitimate um, copyright infringement awards than there should be because you've got juries deciding this and not people like you deciding this? Yes, and I think that's a problem that's very particular to the USA because most other countries, when they hear in the courts, when they hear cases of music copyright infringement litigation, uh, a jury is not involved precisely because a jury is not a, a group of expert songwriters. That, and that means, because juries by definition are randomly selected, um, that means that they are unable, without a lot of guidance, to separate a commonplace element that is like a chord loop that is not protected 
by copyright from a musically unique element. That is something like a top line melody or a lyric. And they just hear subjective similarity and then jump to, in my opinion, the wrong conclusion that the only explanation for that similarity is plagiarism. So then what's the line? If we're not taking direct lyrics, right? I know you pointed out to one of my producers, uh, Diddy's, um, uh, what was it, Missing You and uh, Every Breath You Take, right? Uh, that was a direct lift. I mean, everybody who heard it knew, oh, he must be sampling this, but he didn't get permission, right, initially. But what's the line right. here if you are playing a chord that, as you, as you demonstrated, so many have used? Well, in the case of that very famous example of plagiarism, that was an example of sampling. Hmm. Uh, so in 1997, Puff Daddy took an eight-bar sequence, the very famous guitar riff from the Police's 1983 track, Every Breath You Take, and um, slightly pitch shifted it, but actually just looped that sample. So effectively, in music industry terms, he was infringing two copyrights, the musical work, that is the song, and the sound recording, because he was using the police's actual recording and inserting it into I'll Be Missing You as a backing track. So that was blatant, it was obvious, he didn't ask permission, and it cost him 100% of the royalties. And I would say rightly so, because there's no doubt about it in a case of obvious sampling like this. But the point is, he wasn't copying a commonplace element. Yeah. He was actually taking something that's very specific to every breath you take. Um, and with cases like this, I think some plaintiffs are perhaps guilty of being a little opportunistic because mm. they know that a jury is going to hear subjective similarity and they can kind of leverage that to you know, try and get the defendant to cave on this case. Yeah. And full credit to Ed Sheeran. I feel like he's standing up for songwriters everywhere by sticking to his integrity and, you know, holding out for the truth. Well, we remember, um, and we've got a wrap here, that there were, just a few years ago, the uh, Marvin Gaye's family, they were awarded $5 million uh, after the copyright case involving Robin Thicke and Blurred Lines and uh, got to give it up and Marvin Gaye's classic there. Um, Professor Bennett, man, this has been an education. Um, I appreciate it. I'm going to uh, request something. Can you play us off the break here? Well, I'm happy to play you that chord loop so people can sing along yeah, with let's hear it. song they would like. All right. Let's do it. We'll be right back.